There we go. Now, now we don't have double audio. I am good at computers, and so is Matt, and that's why. But just us for now, but we're working it out. We are the live of us today. Sorry. Good deal. Um. <laughs> Yes, this is the face behind the beard, I guess. What was the face behind the beard? Um, we are back on uh, Variant Rolls and Gothic Brunch today after a bit of a hiatus for Gen Con. <laughs> and uh, that is what we are uh, going to enjoy today. Um, by way of uh, resetting things, um, we're going to do a quick roundabout on everybody, just very quickly introducing themselves, and then we'll reset where people are and what is going on in the magical world of the Gothic Brunch. So, uh, first of all, uh, Adam, why don't you introduce yourself real quick? Yes, hi, uh, welcome back. Uh, I am uh, the pun bard, hashtag pun bard. I'm at Peter Foss on Twitter. I make daily D&D &D puns. I go by he, him pronouns, and I'll be playing Quint Wheelwright, the toolist, who also goes by he, him pronouns. Very good. Oh, wow. I'm good at finding the mute button in a pinch. Hi everybody, I'm Val, I use she her pronouns, and today I will be playing Ambrosia, the changeling archfey warlock who uses they them pronouns and is a disaster child. And finally for now, Emma. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Emma, I use she her pronouns. Um, you can find me at MK Hansen on the interwebs. And today I will be playing Annabelle, our uh, lovely werewolf uh, ancestral barbarian, who also uses she, her pronouns. And if Matthew could fix stuff on his end, because heck, um, then he will be joining us playing Delilah today. But for now, we're just going to pretend that Delilah is being unusually quiet and unusually not so smart. Uh, which actually is good because starting out, um, let's see, Delilah, Annabelle, and Ambrosia are in an ancient library beneath the main library of Creed Hall University. And Quint had doubled back to check on his shop. Quint, could you tell us why you were concerned about your shop? So Quint has, uh, for reasons of his own, uh, he he's a little bit uh, uh, secretive about his armor, and let's just say that he has some valuable information that he's stashed at his shop, and with uh, certain um, poor choices made by him regarding leaving some of his material elsewhere, he's worried that somebody might uh, put two and two together and. Uh, he just wants to check on things and make sure his shop is okay, make sure he's worrying about nothing. Of course, of course. Could you do me the favor, as you head towards your shop, of rolling me a perception check? Absolutely. Okay. That would be uh, unnatural 19. Very good. Now let me check. Something. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Why would you worry about it? Commence the worrying. Nope. All right. So you head back. In fact, let me. Well, yeah. Let me. Uh, everybody seeing the same thing. There we go. So you're heading down the street. You're. It is. Um, Mid morning, as you're reaching your shop. What's your shop's name again? It is called Quince Essentials. Because of course it is. And let's see. Let me get this one here. 
There we go. There we go. So, you get there. Uh, as you enter your shop, everything seems in order. Uh, hmm. Why don't you give me a, another perception check? Absolutely. That would be a 23. I'm rolling well today. You are rolling well today. That is very good. What did you say? 23? Yep. As you're in your shop, everything seems in order. Nothing seems missing or disturbed. What you do notice is that occasionally when you glance out the front what is what would you say is your shop completely enclosed do you have like a front window what is it what is it like on the front of your shop oh he has a storefront like like it's it's a window you can look into okay. and everything like you know he has a certain of like an openness that he wants for his shop sure sure you see someone across the street that after a minute you think about you think maybe you saw her earlier and you were walking back to the shop. Okay. You see this person. As soon as she sees you, notice her. She kind of glances away and walks off around the corner. So after after I make sure that everything in my shop is is uh, cleared up, I uh, I you know put grab up my sword and and, and pistol. Uh, and shield, and I make my way out. Okay. Uh, and I go, I duck around the corner that the, I saw the person go through, but I do it quietly. I don't, you know, I'm not like hard. Right, so why don't you give me a stealth move? Okie doke. That would be... Sixteen... Uh, Seventeen. Um... You see her just ducking into the doorway of an old warehouse. And she kind I of go in. inside. You go in? Well, no, I mean, I, I, I go towards it, but I also I check at the door first. Uh, right. But I also want to see if there's anybody watching. Give me a perception check. Perception, that would be an unnatural 20. You don't see anybody else here. On this. this is sort of a tucked away alleyway, sort of in an industrialish part of town, not too far from the lake. And uh, yeah, um, and you hear her. You can hear her now, kind of running through whatever building that was. Like you hear the pop, 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 pop of her boots. Okay, I I follow after. Oh my. Because Quint, Quint is, he's feeling a little, a little paranoid, I this think. This is interesting. Um, give me a perception check at disadvantage. Okay. Oh, no. That's a uh, four plus four, so that's a eight. All right. So you enter in this warehouse it's filled with boxes and crates and old stores look like it hasn't been touched in a long time the labels on it indicate just industrial equipment or whatever um, uh, and the because it's inside it's very dark there's lots of dust floating in the air there's for the windows of you know it's a large warehouse so there's windows up near the ceiling that are looking in these kind of shafts of light um, but you see just the dust boats floating in the air. Um, and with all of those shadows, uh, it's hard to see much in here. You can keep looking around if you want, or perhaps it was just somebody who uh, just happened to be on the street. Nah, Quint, Quint's going to look around, I think. Right, can give me an investigation check then? Okay. Yeah, he's he's feeling a little bit more and more suspicious. Alrighty. Uh, just a straight investigation? Yep. Oh, no. Uh, that's a straight 10. Okay. Um, let's see. Roll. 
Vamos a ver bien. <coughs> yeah, you spent some time, and occasionally you hear some sound, but it's hard to say if that's those are just rats elsewhere in the warehouse, or if those were steps or whatever. But uh, you spent some time in this warehouse and find no one. Okay. I think at this point, Quint just gets a little frustrated and he uh, makes towards the exit quietly. All right. All right. You heading towards the uh, library where your friends told you they were going? Yeah. Yeah. But he's, uh, I'm keeping a careful look. Well, actually, I'm going to drop by um, uh, the place where I dropped off my armor. You're going to go back to the D. Rosalva Manor? No, no, because the, the the armor the armor is at. Uh, um, uh, oh, at Ambrosia's uh, apartment. Yeah, that's a one way to call it, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, but you said you're keeping an eye out as you go, right? Yeah. Well, maybe there'll be another perception check. Okay, dokie. I, I love it. That's a fifteen plus four, so nineteen. Don't see anybody. Don't see anything interesting. You certainly don't see that person. Okay. Uh, and I uh, uh, get to the armor just okay? Yep, armor is all there. What do you do all with right. it? All right. I'm going to pack it up as, as tightly as I can and uh, hoof, it over to, hoof it over to the library. When you say pack it up as tightly as you can, Yeah. Do you mean you're taking it in your backpack, or you're just leaving it secured at Ambrosia's place? I'm putting it in in it in my hiking pack, essentially. I mean, not that I have any reason to ask. Yeah, yeah, he's he's taking it with him. He doesn't want to leave it in a uh, place where it could be uh, taken. Sure. No, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um. Okay. Well, with that be the case, um. As you get to the university, you're a little bit of a known quantity there. Not a lot, but you've been there before. And your friends went there recently, and they called in one of their... As you may recall, when you um, carry on a task for the dean of the university, he informed you all that he would uh, you know, owe you a favor. And Delilah called in her favor getting permission to go into the library, which is normally just for students and scholars. Um, but as you were getting to the library, you hear from underneath the building, at this distance and through the, all this material, just a very loud zoom. And everyone looks very nervous. Everyone starts looking up, you know, people start murmuring to themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, just... Pulling back the curtain a little bit, that was um, Ambrosia during the one of the earlier fights when um, the guardian, library guardian, um, had nearly smacked some people around pretty hard. And she cast, was that Thunder Step or something like, or Thunder Wave, or what was it exactly? Uh, it was, uh, it, in theory, it was Thunder Step, but these are baseless allegations that I caused this explosion. <laughs> you know, explosion is such a extra dramatic word, right? Um, so a young man in spectacles runs up to you, Quint, and mm -hmm. sees you as you're kind of in the library. He's like, um, um, excuse me, there's been some sort of disturbance underneath and we may need to evacuate the library. What do you do? Where's, where's the uh, disturbance coming from? If you don't uh, mind. I, I have some friends who are here. I, I would like to go check on them. Were you friends with a very attractive young woman, a very old woman, and another woman who was there? Because if so, your friends might be in trouble. Quinn just lets out the 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 longest sigh. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, I. Where where are they? I would I would like to go check on them. Yes, yes. And he takes you kind of through the shelves around to another 
doorway, there's a sort of that leads has a spiral staircase that leads down. You, you pass through a very heavy oaken door that wasn't locked because he had unlocked it for Ambrosia earlier. Because Ambrosia, if what guys were you earlier? Would you like to tell to tell us all? Oh yes, I would. Blow me lightly. I was in the guise of Penny Farthen. A young chimney sweep with a sparkle in her eyes and a pip in her step who was real excited to be part of this university. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that one. So he points down there and he says, we'll, we'll, we'll try to get help, but that's very concerning and I hope that nothing bad has happened. And okay, yes, right. And I close the door on his face. <laughs> oh, oh and, and, and check on the young lady, make sure she's okay. Okay, and then immediately after I hear footsteps going away, I get off my pack in the stairwell and I try to get in my armor. Okay. And with that, why don't we move everybody over to the library? Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, thanks to Elvin Tower, this is one of his patron only maps that uh, I use because he does great work. Uh, you can see. Uh, let me change the uh, music as well, since we're no longer on the street, right? Now it's much more like this. There we go. Let's get that going. Yes. Yes, yes. Turn that up a tiny bit. You're in this deep. You come around. And you see your friends kind of recovering. Ambrosia is down at a door. Annabelle is looking at bookshelves. Delilah is glaring at everyone. What do you Hello? do? Hello? What's, what's going on? I heard a loud explosion. Are you all all right? Yes, it um, was. Uh, uh, the the live the live the mechanic uh, thing blew up. Yep, that's what happened. I'm s I'm sorry. What? Uh, we were attacked for no reason other than being here because we do not go to this university, and it blew up, and that's why that happened. It, it, it. What? What blew up? Listen, Quint. Quint please don't. Just hold on to your. To your gears for a second uh we did uh cause a bit of a commotion down here all right now it's fine everyone is fine but uh we we did uh disassemble some antagonistic uh creatures of sorts right uh, we, were, we were trying to take out a library book, you see, and they were most insistent that we could not take out the library book. The situation devolved. We had to fight, uh, barely escaping with our lives. Uh, then we disassembled it. Uh, we got a necklace, I think. Did we get a necklace, Annabelle, dear? I got to be honest, I don't remember after the explosion. <laughs> there was a necklace, a sort of amulet on that guardian, the smaller guardian that is um, kind of in between you and the uh, Cogwork librarian. Um, not that it matters much now. But the important thing is we, are, uh, we have some library books to take out. Everyone is alive and we only stole like four things. So a good day. On the other, Quint, on the other side of Annabelle, you can see these large double doors with um, these sort of receptacles or recessions in the wall above it in sort of like an arc of three, but that door is is closed. To your north, you see a couple of reading rooms and a library. To your west, you see sort of repositoria of stone slabs. And you no longer see a statue to the south where Ambrosia is because that statue has been disassembled <laughs> in the doorway. But there are two, three doors in that room where Ambrosia is. What do you okay. Do? Uh, do I see uh, the the two like mechanical corpses? Oh yeah, absolutely. Can I? I want to. I want to check to see if there's anything similar to what we saw in the uh, uh, 
You know the the, the uh, mechanical uh, uh, the symbols that we saw on the other one in uh, the De Rosalba. I don't think you saw any of those. Perhaps and you might suggest that Ambrosia could compare because you, okay. that was down that was down in the basement of the De Rosalba Manor. Is that the ones you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones where Ambrosia by themselves went off into a dungeon while everybody else stood outside. We made it out of their lives, barely. <laughs> we did. Um, Ambrosia is, are these, do they have any similar markings? Did you notice similar markings to the De Rosalba creatures? I was completely just about to check that, Quint, darling. Thank you for reminding me. Do these symbols look familiar to me? Can you give me an investigation check? Uh, can I help? You can absolutely help. Okay. Thank goodness, because that was an eight the first time. Uh, <laughs> Funny story, Lyle, by the way, while you're, while you're doing that, was my childhood nickname from a beloved great uncle. So he was always called me Lyle. And, 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 <laughs> okay, uh, so, so what's your total? I got an 18. Ooh, an 18. Um, while the so the librarian looks similar in manufacture, but not there are no specific markings that make it that look like the other one. The uh, other smaller one right in between you two does it doesn't really look like it's that similar. It looks much older, much simpler in many ways. Um, unfortunately, that librarian uh, when it was uh, uh, deactivated. Um, it, oh, yay, yay, yay. We have a friend. We have a new friend. Hello. Hello. Guys, we can fight stuff now. And then he disappeared <laughs> yeah, and came back. Let the Matthew W. Hello. Foreman experience begin. Hello. The, the whole experience. Oh, hey, Matt. Uh, Kyle. I know, right? Man, okay, so y'all give me a minute. I got to fix cameras now. I feel like I should be in my VR shirt. Everyone's in their VR shirts this morning. I, I am not. I'm waiting for mine to come. <laughs> You've done fucked up, Emma. <laughs> You've done Ooh. fucked up. Ooh. Ooh. You look very good. Y'all can keep uh, role play while I fix, th fix this. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the Guardian looks much older. The Librarian looks much newer. But the battery that was in it exploded when it was uh, deactivated. Are there any bits I can salvage off of them? Um, yeah, you could uh, do some scavenging, I guess. Are you looking for anything in particular, or just whatever you could grab? Whatever, yeah, whatever seems useful, or like hard to come by. Uh, yeah, give me a... Do you have a proficiency? You've got proficiency with tinker tools or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, so give me an intelligence check with your proficiency modifier for that. Okay. Oh, not much. Uh, 11. 11. Okay. So, yeah, you've got some parts. We can talk later about what they specifically do. Uh, but, yeah. I'm really good at doing these things, y'all. Kyle, next time you got to create a duplicate scene for the two cameras. That way you don't have to... Go yeah, I, I wasn't. Ex yeah, I, it's probably fair. I need to be better at computers. I'm not good at this computer thing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just your job. It's fine. I As do streaming. <laughs> Matthew's coming in hot this morning. Yeah. Not kidding. <laughs> Listen, it's not our fault, Matthew, that your computer wouldn't boot after, That's true. after you did your maintenance. I did. It turns out my drive, the drive that I cleaned and repaired failed anyway. <laughs> So oh, I've, lost, I've lost a terabyte of data, archives, it's fine. Oh. Hopefully you have backups, right? Kyle, that's not the question you ask in these moments. You wait for a couple hours and then you ask that. <laughs> I was trying to look on the bright side and I just had assumed. They are backed up. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That See, I assumed it. correctly. Almost, all, almost none of it matters to me. There's one thing, which is my archival work for tabletop gaming, where like everything I've ever gotten my hands on 
is in one folder electronically. Yeah, and I agree, and that's what Google Drive is for. Yep. Or or Dropbox or whatever you like. I don't know. Okay, so now let's get as... Matthew back on. That's not the thing. Um, so I guess, as... go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no worries. So I was gonna say, as as we're looking through the uh, the two corpses, or the, the the wreckage, Quint is just like, like doing this constant stream of like, oh no, this is this is terrible. Like, oh, such a wonderful piece of engineering. I can't. Why? What? How did this? Oh no. Like just a constant rambling. You, are you doing okay there, Quint? I just. I've always wanted to come down here, and I had a whole string of bits of research I wanted. Uh, no, no, to be clear, this was a hidden area oh. that nobody oh. had seen. This was this took some social engineering on the part of Ambrosia. Social, social engineering. engineering. We mean charm person. Creepily flirting with an older guy oh, no. who then I... himself creepily flirted with a fifteen-year-old. Although he older is relative, right? He was still. Fairly young, Listen, but old enough to know better. When you're playing a warlock, channel your inner Johnny from Dragon Heisters and charm everybody. <laughs> <Tea. laughs> <laughs> not that far off base. It's working. Yeah. It did yeah. work. Quint, Quint is very... He, he, he wishes that he could have been here to maybe... Like, I just, I feel like maybe destroying this particular, I just, I trust you all. I, I, I apologize. I just, oh, it's so nice. I wish I could have seen it when it was still complete. Yeah, it was not our finest moment, but um, we're like, here now. Like 10 minutes before, we also got scared by a book and hid for a while. It's been a weird kind of couple of hours. Ah. Uh. I mean, that's it, my group. <laughs> well, uh, I will be quite honest. I am all out of magic for today. Oh, and as so the other thing that we had done, which I was waiting for Delilah to come back, you had listened in that room where the guardian was to yourself. There are three doors. You had listened to them all, and from behind the southwest door you had heard some sort of sobbing babbling whispering hard to say what it was and that's where delilah got the sense hard to say with much precision because there's so much here but delilah that was pinging for you on your special senses i forget which exact sense it was but I detect it was. detect evil and good okay it's like a 30 foot radius. I believe I lost it from damage. Uh... I believe that's right. But I'm going to say you would still remember that you had felt something behind there in that right. direct, or at least in that direction. And also, I mean, you can hear some, you know, Ambrosia heard something down there. Okay. Yo. So, what was the statue? That was. Oh, are you asking in character? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I point over. I look over at the thing. And I'm like, what was that before it was dismantled? Uh, which one? Are you? Is he pointing at the the statue that Annabelle pulled the thing off of? Being pinged in the southeast of the Yeah, that one. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, it was a uh, statue of sorts. Um, it appeared to be some sort of guardian, I believe, and it had a control mechanism that I was inclined to investigate, which is kind of actually what caused the dismantling. Oh, dear. <sighs> Uh, it's not Annabelle's fault that that being was very attached to its jewelry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, we're we're here now. What what 
what should we be about? We're going to look behind the stupid door, aren't we? <laughs> that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was just too funny to phrase it. <laughs> we, uh, out of curiosity, did we take a short rest when we ended this? Is that, did we end up doing that? You did not. You took a short rest after something, but not right after this. Okay. Oh. Did I buy a new healer's kit? My notes are gone. No. Okay. 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 Right. No, I did not. Well, I don't know how much time we have down here. Uh, I was led here by a bespectacled uh, librarian, and I, th I think he mentioned that that somebody was going to be here soon. Why? Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Um, Delilah, darling, are you inclined to check behind the creepy door where there is definitely death waiting for us, or? I will join you in this endeavor as much as I do not wish to. Or do you want to run from this library and deal with the guards? No, no, no. We can... We can I'm sure they're not sending guards. There's been a reason to send guards. We, yes. You were able to beguile them. Um, let's check out the door. Oh, right. Giant men in armor first. <laughs> So there are three doors. The as, as I noted, the sound came from the southwest door. Is everyone just hiding in the next room? And, and we're, it's uh, these this room, right? That room, southwest door, was where the sound came from. You can certainly open whichever door you wish. Okay, so just to be clear, there's a door here. There's a door there. And a door here. No. There's no. a door directly in front. Uh, let me do it like this. Door directly in front of Quint. Okay. And a door right here, and this is where the sound came from. The one that's on the other side of Annabelle. Right gotcha. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it was a little bit difficult for me the to see. The other that. rooms had the doors, you know, looked identical, but there was no sound behind them. Um, just for kicks, I want to give another uh, uh, perception check. Or I just want to like take give a listen before I you know. I uh, think that's a great idea, and I would love for you to make a perception check. Okay. Oh, not too good. Uh, that would be a uh, unnatural ten. There's some kind of whispering, babbling on the other side of the door, but that's all. Okay, doke. Do you mind giving me just one second? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, oh, right. So just a babbling, I can't make out anything else? It doesn't sound like actual words. I'm going to very quietly, as quietly as I'm, I'm able to, uh, open the door. Oh, right. So as you do that, couple of things happen. Uh-oh. As soon as the door opens, there is a... Why do I do this? Um, there's this immediate sound. None of you are surprised, probably, but that lets out this howling babble. <laughs> And first of all, I need everyone to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh, nice. As you see on the other side, this whirling mass of shadow. One, very good. Everyone else, that, that's a total of one? No, that's a natural one. I, it's, a, it's a saving throw, I see the total. Oh, total is two. Okay. All <laughs> oh, right. No. Delilah? Oh, Delilah, oh, you're yeah. muted. 
11. Delilah rolled an 11 on a wisdom saving throw. That's unexpected. Yeah, plus seven. <laughs> so oh. 11, total. 11 total. The other two of you, what's your total? 16? I got a 15. Okay, so. Um, let's see. I need... Oh, no, I have it in here. The two of you who rolled under 14. I mean, it wasn't that hard, y'all. Uh, let's see. Are gonna take. I'm good at. I'm definitely prepared. It's all good. It's all fine. Um. Are gonna take seven psychic damage. The other two of you take three psychic damage. And then Quint and Delilah, you are stunned as this howling babble reaches into your mind. And I need everyone to roll for initiative. Oh, no. This is fine. Okay. 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 It's okay. We're all okay. This is uh, stunning. Ha! Ha! <laughs> that was luck. As you say. I got an unnatural 20. I got a uh, 14. Okay, let me do this. Let me do this. All right, all of you are going to get a turn. Okay, so Quint had a 14. Yep. Um, Ambrosia, you had a 20? I did. Delilah, what's your initiative? Seven. Annabelle? Eight. <laughs> and for our friendly monster. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. So here's how we're going to do this. This is going to be uh, Ambrosia. You passed, as I recall. Yeah. Um, so you see this swirling mass of shadow and insanity there in front of your friends. What do you do? I am going to use an item. I'm going to use my spoopquish. My spoopquit. My spoopquish. Oh, you are. Well, I haven't used it this entire time, and I've had it. I think this is great, and I'm so glad that you are. What is specifically are you doing with this Uh, I'm go. You just see, yeah, Ambrosia going like, I told them not to open the stupid door. I knew it was a stupid door, and it's like grips the Scoopquish and go, "Hello, Demon Daddy, I need some help." Demon Daddy. I'm summoning Matthew Foreman in demon form. It's his darkest self. <laughs> oh, that's right. So you're using this to cast what? Summon lesser aberrations. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about this. Oh, I did. I did forget about this. I have the item. I might as well use it. I am so glad that you use this. Can you roll a d6 for me? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to. Yes, you do. You cast a spell. Four. Four? Yep. OK, so this is going to be like this. And what's going to show up? <laughs> oh, this is fine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay. Um, I just I didn't ex actually expect that you were going to cast it this time, so I just need to pull out. So, what happens is four of these little guys show up. Ah. Four floating greenish heads with four each of them having four eye stalks coming out of it. Um, 
and to keep my life easier. Um, did you read what the spell does? Uh, I they don't attack the person holding the squish, uh, and the demon aberrations we summoned instead of demons. The summoned aberrations will not harm any creature holding the squish. Uh, okay, the, yeah. we're, we're with the worst. So, um, do you read what the spell does? Uh, I haven't read what Summer Lesser Aberrations does, except it's Summer, Summer Lesser Demons. I just went YOLO with it. Okay. Um, the Aberrations are hostile to all creatures. Ooh. I remember that, but then the Squoosh, I'm like, hold on the Squoosh, and I'm like, no! It's right. It's not host- they're not hostile to you because of this particular item. That's true. But they're hostile to everyone else. Ha. So that's what I just want you to be aware of. This is fine. This is all fine. Everything is so good right now. Could it be better? No. No, it really couldn't. No. <laughs> you guys no. are here because I don't have any spell slots. Yeah. No. <laughs> this is a terrible idea. Um, this is fine. We could have some more dice, apparently. I am so sorry for not suggesting we stop for a short rest. This is fine. I love how you have done this. Um, <laughs> I have right. so many regrets. All right, anything else on your turn, Ambrosia? Uh, no, but how do you want me to roll for B, in initiative-wise? I got them. Don't worry about them. You don't control them. You just summon them. Oh, then in which case... You could You could try to tell them something if you want. You just need to make a check to see if you can convince them. B, uh, please go check I weaknesses. You know what you do. You know what you do. What does B do? Uh, I think uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm just go- furiously googling. Uh, it's not sprite familiar. I don't know if this is people though. Uh, or do 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 heart sight. Uh, no, actually, no, not going to use that. Use your long sword. She has a wee little long sword. So your, your, um, friend is a sprite or a pixie? Sprite. Sprite. Yes. Very good. I knew that. And your sprite... You're going to have them use their long sword? Yes, please. Okay, well, you're just keeping things all kinds of fun, ain't you? I'm afraid. Why would you be afraid then? Because Kyle has that voice on. I don't understand what you mean. I am going to have your familiar go on your turn because that just makes my life easier. Um, and the sprite... Uh, can you ha- to roll for their attack? What are they attacking specifically? Uh, I'm trying to get them to attack the massive insanity. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, they're going to fly forward and give me a d20 plus 2 to hit. Uh, that's a 14. Um, and that is going to hit. They do one slashing damage to it. They do. Um, however... It doesn't seem to do much of anything to the, uh, to the to the creature, and now it's the gazer's turn. Or did you tell the gazers to do anything? No, you told your sprite what to do, so no. So the gazers, I'm gonna I'm gonna randomly let them choose who they target. One, two, three, four, five. So that's fine. That's gonna be one of these. And then I'm going to roll to see what they do, because they have a randomization within them. This is great. I am so happy that you used this item. I couldn't tell you. Um, You see one of them, a ray, shoot out towards Delilah. Delilah, can you give me another uh, saving throw? What kind? Uh, Sorry, wisdom. Oh, okay. I was going to say, strength or dex, I'm going to (laughs) auto-fail. Uh, 19. Yep, yep. It's 
the, this, a daze comes over to you for just a second, but even in your stunned state, maybe you're just too stunned to even notice it. Um, the next one is going to shoot a ray at uh, the familiar. Um, can the can you have uh, your familiar there, uh, Ambrosia, make a deck save? That's a d20 plus 4. B gets a 21. Okay, yeah. The uh, frost ray, she dodges out of the They dodge out of the way of this ray of frost that comes flying out towards them. I love how you have done this. I'm so happy right now. I can't even tell you. Quint... Can you please also give me a deck save? You're stunned, so you auto fail. Yeah. So, hmm, hmm, so good right now. Uh, that's going to be a ray of frost flies out towards Quint, who takes eight points of cold damage. Would you count this as physical damage? No, this is magical damage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to check something real quick. Toolist. Going fine, y'all. This is going great. I'm so happy this is happening. Okay, so the uh, damage reduction I have for reinforcing doesn't necessarily specify a damage type. Okay. You, so, you designed the quest, not me. Okay, so I, I did kind of have it with the intent of like of like stuff that like isn't just like radiant, necrotic, or, or psychic that I would be able to reduce the damage. Okay. All right. So how much? You, how much do you say? It was a total of eight damage originally. Okie dokie. That's reduced by five for three. Oh, uh, the the last gazer does fly towards the insanity shadow thing. So that's good, right? <laughs> and... Oh. Oh, that's disappointing. Uh, you see a ray fly out, kind of a swirly ray, and similar to the one that... Uh, went towards Delilah, but it seems to have no effect on that shadow. Doing fine, doing great. Quint, you're stunned. At the end of your turn, you can... you you recover from your stun. Cool. At the end of your turn. <laughs> Delilah, the same for you. you. After the end of your turn, you kind of shake it off. And now the other thing goes. And um, I need you, uh, three of you. Let's see. I need Ambrosia, Quint, and Annabelle to make wisdom saves as you uh, hear whispers of madness in your mind. 24! Very good. Uh, 18. Four. Oh, no. No, Quinn. Okay, so here's what happens. Oh, dear. Yep, so, uh, Quint, you take six psychic damage. The other of you take three psychic damage. And, Quint, you need to make a melee attack against Annabelle. Okay. <gasps> Oh, snap. Natural 20. Cool, cool, oh. cool. Oh. 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 Good. This is really good, you guys. This is good, 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 not good. bad at all. We should run. Yeah. That's uh, a yeah. 2d8. Okay. Remember, it's a crit. Yeah, so that's that's 1d8, but it would be 2d8, right? Yep, correct. Yeah. So that's 8 plus 5. Uh, and um, and I only add my strength modifier once. Yeah, correct? you don't double that. Whatever you add, you only just roll double the dice. That's all that it does. 
So that's 15 points of uh, slashing damage. Is that from a non-magical weapon? It is from a non-magical weapon. I have immunity to that damage. What is that? Are you raging? Is that only during rage? Because I just have it up under my defenses. Oh, is that? that... Actually, that was one of my questions. I didn't know if I had that all the time or only when I raged. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, you have that would I'm going to say you have all the time. Okay. Yeah, so you all see his just bring his axe down on her, and she kind of maybe flinches a tiny bit because her friend hit her. Like, what? But it just sees the skid off of her skin. Huh. Is it Quint's like, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Quint, can you do me something else? Yes. Can you do me the honor of rolling a, first of all, a D100 for me? Okay. Uh, D100. Right. One moment. That's uh, the the two... uh, two, uh, Yeah, two D10s. Pick one of them as the tens digit and one of them as the uh, ones digit. All right. Uh, So the zero, nine, and then I rolled a... uh, Wait, wait, nope. Yeah, the zero, nine, and then I rolled a nine. So it's a 99. Okay. You rolled a 99. Yeah. Can you roll a separate D10 for me? Okay. What's happening? Okay. Uh, (laughs) Right. Okay. Here we go. A one. (laughs) You all see as the, as you hear the whispers of madness in your mind, you see Quint fall unconscious. <gasps> oh no! Oh, do, do I drop to zero or do I just? No, you just no. You don't. Your hit points don't change. You just fall unconscious. Oh, okay. Alrighty then. For the next, what was what was it you rolled on the last D10? The last, last extra one I could roll. The one. Uh, the... The last D10 I rolled was a one. Yes, so it's for one minute. Okay. Okay, no, everything's fine. Y'all are doing great. Annabelle, what do you do? Okay. Quentin just hit you, and then he collapsed. Yeah, it's not great. Um, how approximately heavy is Quint? With his armor? Yeah. Very, very heavy with his armor on. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the normal human weight like um yeah normal human weight plus the uh plus uh whatever however much a uh a suit of plate mail weighs so probably close to 300 pounds is that too heavy for me to carry whilst i am raging what is your strength score 18. that would be Ooh. 18 times 30. Yeah, that, okay. you can carry him. I'm going to say you're going to have to move at half speed carrying a man with a man in full plate armor. Okay. Well, then, uh, Annabelle, uh, you will all, as you are now hopefully used to, going to hear wolves howling in the distance. And you will see all of my ancestors that I will start to utilize now that I know that they do things. Uh, and I'm going to transform into my werewolf rage form and I'm going to pick Quint up and start leaving the vicinity and as I am leaving I am going to say uh, Ambrosia this is not great I do have a steel mirror in my bag though if we need that against your minions I will co- try to control my new demon babies. I make no promises, though. Speaking of which, Ambrosia, it's your turn. Uh, I feel like this is the point where we run, so uh, I would like to speak to my new demon babies and say, all right, I'm just going to go, but you guys stay and Try and eat that thing. You can do that, right? I believe in you. 
are you just trying to convince them or do you have some uh, additional ability that you're using to convince them somehow? Uh, I have Unsettling Visage, if it will work, which can charm them. Un unsettling uh, Visage. Unsettling Visage, uh, it means I can either charm, I believe, yeah, you can, no, Unsettling Visage, I meant, God, what's it called? Uh, Fae Presence. Uh, I can cause creatures in a 10-foot cube to make a wisdom saving throw or become charmed and frightened by me until the end of my next term. Oh, that is fantastic. What's the DC for that? 14. Okay. You said a wisdom save? Yes. One. One and two. Two and two. So... You said they are charmed and frightened? Uh, either charmed or frightened, so Which, I would choose charmed. So, okay. Um, yep, on their turn, they're going to do a thing. Um, all right, anything else on your... So that's kind of a, just a free action. I'm going to let you do that for free. Um, what do you want to do with your main... What, do you want to, what else do you want to do? Are you going to stay uh, where you are? Are you going to fight? Are you going to... Our two tanks just left. I'm going. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go to the lighter and say... Time to run, I believe, Delilah, darling. And then I'm going to follow Annabelle and Quint. Well, they haven't gotten out of the room yet because Annabelle is dragging Quint. Oh, then I'll... God, I'm so squishy. I will try and help Annabelle drag Quint. Okay, that's definitely not going to cause any trouble going up a spiral staircase. That's no. definitely going to be easy. Kathunk, 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 kathunk. Um, all right. Does okay. that wake me up? Not yet. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay. That throws a, a, you, I guess you're running over here. Two of the gazers do fly here. Oh, what do you want your? What do you want B to do? I'm sorry. Uh, I would like B, if she could, to return to my pocket, but shoot an arrow from her short bow. Right before she does it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Give me a D20 plus six. 26. Uh, that's a nat 20, so 26. Great, so it does up two damage. Um, I need to check something on the target, however. It does one damage. Yeah, I think it does one damage with a chance of Normally, poisoning. Yeah, yeah, so the poisoning doesn't affect this sort of swirling mist of shadow. Um, yeah, we're going to just, in the interest of story say y'all are able to <laughs> okay so i want to explain what is happening right now everyone who's standing up at the top sees a werewolf uh -oh. and ambrosia ambrosia what form are you in right now whilst we were thunking up the stairs i'm gonna try and change into penny farthing so it's like okay. thunk. So they see Kathunk. a werewolf and a 15 year old girl Carrying a man in powered <laughs> armor up the stairs, followed by an old woman. And down below, they just hear pew, 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 as the gazers are fighting with this howling mist of madness. People scream and run away. That's fair. Um, how, without going through every moment of it, first of all, um, Quint, after about a minute, you do come to. Can you mark somewhere on your on your character sheet that you have madness level one? Yes. Madness. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. And after a minute, um, actually no. By the time you get it to the top. Annabelle, you are not in werewolf form because that's only while you're raging and your Correct. rage would have subsided. So they don't see a werewolf. They oh, see, they don't? No. By the time you get to the top, you're not in werewolf form anymore. Oh my god. Bless you. <laughs> I don't even... I, I don't know what I expected, but this was not it. Let me tell you. <laughs> And now I'm in the middle of a university library in my armor. Yep. This <laughs> is great. This is 
time. Remember when I told y'all earlier that I'm not going to lay out stuff for you anymore? I'm just going to let your uh, own complications drive things. This is a perfect example. That's when the chaos ensues. Oh, this is beautiful. This is this is priceless. This is great. This is fine. Yeah, yeah everything's good. Um, yep, so you're in the library. People are, they're not screaming and running because there's not a werewolf in the middle of them. But people are concerned. The young man runs up the young, and uh, um, some of the, you see a couple of the older scholars kind of eyebrows kind of raise when they see Quint and uh, make a quick exit from the library. Um, what do the rest of you do? What do you all do? You're, uh, uh, Quint, you're muted. I assume Quint kind of woke up when uh, when we. Uh, yeah, reached... I, I, when you got to the top, when you got to the top, maybe they kind of sit you down for a minute, Ka-chunk! and after about a minute, you kind of come to from your unconscious state, and there's all these shards of madness flying through your mind. Do I do I realize that I'm in the library? Yeah, yeah, you would see everything around you. I. I look around, I look down, and then I just I can I can, I can curse on stream, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I can't remember. I can't okay. I say <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what was that? Why did we leave? What if you got down there? There is a demon shadow and like mo clockwork monsters that tried to eat us. All we did was try and take out a library book. <sighs> I, I I really have to ask what kind of things you're keeping down there, and it's not it is not safe. And I would call a health inspector if I knew one, and you should probably get that checked out, because there was like a shadow monster. My friend has gone insane, and it, he was like mildly sane before, but now he's full insane. Who are you talking to? That spectacle bloke. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. We'll, we'll inform the dean at once. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he, he's usually the only one who goes down there. Oh, yeah, well, he gave us... Uh, special permission for we're on a mission for him so uh, but we were not warned such things were in there god imagine sending four helpless people down there this armor is just like it's made out of plastic i knock it <laughs> yeah and you, and you clearly hear a metallic dunk, dunk, when you hit it yeah he's a gifted cosplayer he can make anything sound like metal, but it's really just plastic. We're rehearsing a play and getting materials for it. And honestly, I, I've never come so close to death in my life. I'm, I'm so sorry. We'll, we'll fetch the dean at once then. Right. And in the meantime, we will go and take my poor insane friend to a hospital. Do uh, you we... have a wheelbarrow of some sort? <laughs> I... I... I'm sure it'll be better if you just wait here for the dean. Oh, I, I, I think that we, the first priority should be taking care of our injured friend who is in plastic armor. I cannot stress that enough. It's <laughs> plastic armor. <laughs> Can you give me a deception check at disadvantage? Yeah. Oh. Okay, the first was a nat 20, damn it. Deception check. Oh, plus six. Still, it's not bad. This is 16. I don't know what plastic is, <laughs> but I'm glad that your friend is probably going to be okay, even though they're not good at whatever they do. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the, it's the madness. It's gotten to his brain. Usually, he, he's, uh, he's a very good... Um, uh, <laughs> God, he sells something. I wasn't paying attention when he told us. But <laughs> he sells fine plastic goods from far off lands. 
He's usually very good at his job. Anyway, we're gonna oh, leave. Delilah, Delilah is walking away. <laughs> I'm leaving. There. Ah, follow Delilah. Dragging Quinn. Yeah, I think Quint probably follow, starts following after Delilah. Can and, you give me a group dexterity check? <sighs> Not 20! Oh, wow! Okay, but what's your dexterity modifier? Uh, plus one. Okay. The rest of you, it's just roll d20, add your dexterity modifier, and everybody give me their results. One. Oh! Okay. I got a 14. Okay. Got a 13. I don't like that face, Kyle. What does that mean? Just as you are exiting through one of the side doors, you hear the voice of the dean coming into the main door, not the door where you are. What's, uh -oh. what's, what's all this done? What, what's a, what, what sort of tomfoolery is happening here? And just as you're going around the corner, what do you do? Uh, Quint, Quint isn't even, I don't think at this point, I think he's not even bothering to take off his armor. I think he, he feels like that ship has sailed. <laughs> so he's, he's oddly very quiet and he's, I think he's just following the group at this point. He's still trying to process in addition to whatever else happened to him down there. Um, uh, where are y'all headed? Uh, I'm going back to my shack. You're staying away from the others? I I, I mean, I need to rest. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> going it's home. Like, it's like mid, it's like noon. What are, the other three of you, where are you going? Going back to my shop. Y'all are splitting up? I don't know. I think Quint, his first thing is he, he needs to try to limit the damage of whatever is going to happen. Ambrosia and Annabelle, where are you? Where are you going? Uh, uh, I, uh, Annabelle is going to uh, just follow Ambrosia wherever they go. I will. I will follow. So Ambrosia, are you going someplace else? Are you going to follow Quint? Are you going to follow Delilah? Uh, yeah, you have, uh, the only thing apart from not following Quint that Ambrosia would do is go get pancakes. So. Ambrosia will just off go to brunch. We go. We go off to brunch. Annabelle and I go for brunch. You know what? We're gonna go for brunch, but we're gonna go someplace where we can eavesdrop just on anything interesting that might be happening around town. Yeah. You, you think there's something in town happening that's more interesting than you? That's great to know. Well, we're in Crevona. Everything is weird here. <laughs> Going, going fishing for more quests because we don't have enough to do. <laughs> no, no, no! I want to go and see if we can hear like some place down near the docks in case we hear anything else about the lake. Like if yeah. there's some sort of like, like tavern place where we can go and just sort of listen to people who work down near the lake. If there's any, just in case we hear some gossip. Okay. All right. All right. And also get okay. pancakes. And also get pancakes. You know what? We're gonna take a break. It's almost time anyway, and I need a minute to figure out what the hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is fine. This is Every, totally fine. Morning. Everything is great. Um, yeah, so we're going to take a break. We'll be back in about five-ish minutes. Um, refill your mimosas or whatever, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs>
<laughs> that's yes in, in game Hello. brunch. Yes, that's yes in game brunch. Hello, everyone. Hello, we're back. Things are fine. Everything is under control now. I'm sure that everything is going to be okay. I cannot get over this. Like, what do you call this? Like, quests? It's a, land, it's a landing page. I a just, landing page. I it's just, beautiful. I just threw on the clocks. There's different things you can do with it. Um, uh, yeah, I, would, I have a couple of these. This is the one that uh, I use. I need one. Here. I need one for Ghost in the Machine, T. Um, yeah, we can talk uh, later about where to get some more. I mean, clearly, I'm not an artist. No, let's I use some let's do it right now. <laughs> show, show. Pause game and discuss this now. Let us review the last hour of game. Uh, Quint, after finding that somebody had followed him to his shop, tried to turn the tables, did a little spy versus spy counterintelligence work, at least got the face of somebody who was chasing him, went to the library. About the time there was a boom underneath it, a big thump that got everybody nervous. Uh, after he inquired of, after his friends, he was directed to a hidden staircase where once he went down there, he found that not only had they uh, disassembled um, rather violently, they had violently disassembled two constructs down there. Then there was a door behind which they heard babbling and sobbing and who knows what else. And they opened the door. This thing immediately let out a howling babble. At which point, Ambrosia summoned aberrations that then started attacking randomly. Uh, at which point, Quint went mad, hit Annabelle, and then fell unconscious. At which point, Annabelle and Ambrosia kind of just did an emergency evac out of there and Delilah followed out going, why are we leaving? This is fine. And then you've all split up to different directions. Annabelle and Ambrosia have decided this is a good time to go to brunch. Quint is worried about his shop and Delilah wants to go shop. Am I, do, do I, if, if I've gotten anything incorrect in there, please correct me now because it is certainly possible that in all of this I have lost some detail. <laughs> no, you think? No, I mean, no, no. You did. You, I think you nailed it to a T. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay, great. Everything's fine. We did tick up a couple of clocks, the incendiary guild especially, uh, mm -hmm. because... When Quint was pulled up, uh, people saw him in his powered armor. Um, fortunately, because Annabelle is in werewolf form when she rages, and rage wears off if you don't attack or get attacked during, uh, then it wears off pretty quickly, then she had shifted back to human form just as she got to the top of the stairs, and nobody saw a werewolf and a young street urchin carrying a brotherhood of steel uh, so we're going to resolve a few different things quint you go back to your shop and clearly yeah. somebody's been in here while you were gone quint immediately like he Normally he would he would take his time to go through and everything, but he he just makes a beeline straight to the back the back room where he has his workshop and everything. Uh, and he, uh, uh, he checks his safe. His safe. Yeah, you notice that your office has been tossed. Is uh, so his blueprints. All your all your uh, journals have been taken. All your drawers are open. Everything, all the tools have been moved around. When I say toss, you know, like somebody who's just come in and done a, an incredibly quick search. So he. Tell in me a, about his safe. Rare, tell me about this safe. His safe. It, he tried to make it as hidden as he could. Like it's basically one of those things that like built into like some floorboards. You, you pull those back, and, and is it you know? And it's like facing up and uh, a combination kind of a thing. 
Yeah, let me see a thing. I would just assume that he would have like a hidey hole where he could keep some of his like private stuff. Uh huh. No, that makes sense. It does. I just want to check. I need to make a check for um, thing. You know. Yeah. Um. First of all. Oh, that's good. Yep. And then. Uh, those floorboards have been pried up. Safe is open and empty. Quint very uncharacteristically just he I assume he has like a desk or something breakable. And he does have a desk. All the drawers have been pulled open and everything on it has been, you know, completely just shoved aside and moved around. He just, you know, raises up one arm and just smashes it just once, one solidly right in the center. Mm -hmm. and, and there's just this crack in the wood. And he turns around and he leaves. He doesn't take anything extra from the shop. Um, there's nothing else that he needs. And he goes directly to uh, Delilah's shack. Um, kind of, he's still kind of in a daze at this point, but I think he's is he got the armor packed up on his back? Is that the thing? No. Is he wearing it? He's wearing it. He's... <laughs> At this point, his... Uh... I would assume that at this point, he is... Like... I don't know. Like, like he's in a weird headspace. Like, he... he yeah, he just... So got... are we all? <laughs> yeah. He just got a little bit of madness and everything. I think at this point he's through running. Um, and he realizes that he's maybe has been not the most helpful getting every, like staying on track with everybody and he needs to pick and choose exactly what he's about. Fair, fair. So I think he goes to the one person who could probably give him a uh, a little bit of a uh, whatever Delilah gives us. <laughs> so, uh, for just the interesting story, let's say that uh, Delilah, you go to your shack first before you go pick up a healer's kit. Maybe you need to drink some tea and take a load off for a minute of your, your yes. old bones. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think Quint shows up while you're still there. Come in. Uh, Quint opens the door and shuts it. Um, he still has his armor on, but he does raise the visor. And he looks... He looks... Shook. He shook looks... It. Huh? He shook it. Yes. Um, like, for all, for all the armor he has, he just... He sort of slumps in his armor, and I and I say, I, I, I lost it. What did you lose? I, I point to the armor, and I say, I I kept the the blueprints for this hidden for so long, and it's gone, and. I honestly, I almost feel a little relieved, but I'm also, I, I feel like I should say sorry. To me? To everybody, but I guess yes to you and to our other friends, but I, I just need a moment to sit. I don't understand. When you say you lost the blueprints to your incredibly dangerous and groundbreaking weaponry, do you mean like you misplaced them at a shop or that someone took them? Someone took them. My shop is totally, it's not gutted, but everything, somebody was in there. And I think I know 
I think I, I think it's safe to say that the incendiary guild knows where I am now. And I think they might have some sort of connection to what's going on, or at the very least, a business relationship with what's going on. Well, if the incendiary guild took something from you, then we should take it back. I... That does sound like it might be a good thing to do. I don't know if it will do much good, but I think that would be a start for me to work on. I think, at least for the moment, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking anymore. Honestly, being in that library kind of, I feel off. Um, Did it remind you of something? Yes. And it reminded me of a very unpleasant part of my life. And I hope that I can spare other people. But with that lost, I think it's just, I think it's going to happen again for a lot more people. Did it spark some old desires in you? Seeing all that marvelous creation? An intricate work? Not desires, mostly regrets. And I, at this point, I, I do, I do find a find a sturdy enough chair that I can sit down without breaking it. <laughs> if there's no chair, then I lean up against the window. There would be definitely be a chair. Okay. People often come to me for bereavement and grief. So, um, and I mention, I, I, I start talking. I just, it's just kind of like a, like a, you know, how you, if you go to a counselor, it's just like a long stream of stuff. And uh, I do make you some tea, make us both some tea. And he, he does, um, yeah, he unbuckles a, a gauntlet so he's not like crushing the, <laughs> but uh, Quint starts to go in a little bit about his, his history with his family. He doesn't go over everything like book, chapter and verse. But he does mention that when he was developing this armor, he um, he didn't know exactly how it was being tested until one day he was finally asked to put it through a field test um, where he went into, uh, he was brought in with his armor to a uh, the local dungeon. And they had prisoners who were slated for uh, a final, final judgment. Um, and the armor was to be tested in combat conditions. And rather than go through with it, Quint cut his way free. And he goes into detail about like just what all happened and, and some of his journeys between then and now, but he's worried. I'm, I don't want this to be put so to anybody else. So were you a prisoner or were you just a scientist? This was honestly my life's work for as, as, as long as I was alive. And it was a family project. My family was working on this. We were commissioned. Well, still, it's your work. It's your ideas. People just can't come in and take it. They've wronged you, Quint. And that kind of... That kind of, uh, well, that kind of wronging has to be paid in full. Venge vengeance demands a tribute. I... You can't just let people take things from you. He nods and he, and he drinks some of his tea and he sort of thinks for a bit. I think, I think at this point, Quint kind of goes quiet, but he does, I think at this point, he does start unbuckling his armor. Yes, I've heard. One second, sorry. Do we know where they might be headquartered in, 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 in um, Greedall? 
I don't know. Honestly, I get weird vibes about the Dean. When we walked through his office, it just seemed like a million places I've seen before. I, I don't, it's not based, it's not based on anything. I don't think the Dean is, I'm not saying he doesn't know, but I wouldn't count him as a member. And I don't know how directly, his office spoke to something else. And I, unless the Incendiary Guild are fanatical seekers of knowledge, uh, the Incendiary Guild strikes me more as a kind of industrialist, creative types, uh, forgers. Not necessarily knowledge for the sake of knowledge. Or power. For the most part, I think maybe uh, they have a, a distant, a, a different understanding of, of things than other folks. I think that in some cases there are some folks there who might take things a little too far, and I think I might have been part of that Under, understood but the dean the dean worships a being known as these the elder scholar also known as the light in the darkness that's what i picked up from his office that's the stone that ambrosia is wielding it's the stone of the elder scholar hmm. that makes me feel a little better i guess The old gods aren't also, not everyone who worships the old gods is a sinister mess. That's, that's true. And I think I may have made more of it with all of this going on. I honestly, I, after talking about this, I feel a little better. I feel like everything's finally out in the open and Obviously, I won't go marching around in my armor all the time, but I feel, yes, anyways. Save your armor for when we need it, when we find your enemies. That's, that's all I have. So, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I think Quint also makes makes dinner. I think if this is if, if we're staying around for a long rest, he's he's going to uh, start bustling it's, around. It's like lunchtime right now, so okay. He makes a lunch. busy, busy morning. Yes. So while while he's making lunch for Delilah at her house, uh, Annabelle and Ambrosia go for pancakes because that's a thing now. Seriously. Um, and you're in a small cafe, sort of on a market square. Um, because it's midday, there's a lot of people going about their business. And uh, yeah, so um, yeah, let's zoom in on, on that for a little bit, on the two of them chatting. And then we'll see what they might overhear while they're there. Let's, let's zoom in on the two of them first. Uh, what? form is ambrosia in currently ambrosia is just in uh that ambrosiaist form of white hair got it okay i didn't know if i was still talking to penny fair hello, oh, but... hello. <laughs> <laughs> well uh that could have gone better um but it could have gone a lot worse and knowing us that is a high benchmark. Is it though? We have ha certainly had some interesting experiences. Uh, speaking of those interesting experiences, how are, um, you know, things? Uh, it depends what you're referring to, Annabelle, my friend. Are you referring to the thunder person, say that appeared out of nowhere, or just my general demeanor. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give you one guess as to what I'm asking about. But Very only well. one. Oh, oh, the pressure's on then. I'm, uh, I don't really know. Something uh, has my entire life 
Uh, I haven't known who I am or what I am. I just knew I was not of the, what we would call, norm. Annabelle, my friend, I am going to tell you something and I would very much appreciate it if it just stayed between us. Of course, I think by now you know that we share some things. We do share some things. It is quite nice not feeling alone in such things. It is. My uh, origins of such have been a mystery to me. I was raised in an orphanage of St. Vashtina. I won't go into detail with it, but it wasn't the friendliest place for children to grow up. My name, no one knew it, so I just, I am nobody. That was what they called me. Ambrosia was just something that I picked up along the way and stuck. Plus, it sounds very fancy, and I don't know about, I don't know if you've noticed, my friend, but I'm trying to give off a certain aesthetic. I don't like people knowing about me because I don't know about me. When B popped up for a full 30 days, I thought I might be a demon of some kind.